One of the most frightening things I've heard is when someone pointed out that the existence of the Uncanny Valley implies that at some point there was an evolutionary reason to be afraid of something that looked human but wasn't. David Szymanski. By far one of the most haunting and creepy videos I've seen is this one. The video shows a recording of a person peeking inside of a bedroom. We instantly notice something is very wrong. Their eyes are continuously staring, they're trying to maintain a positive expression, and their skin is a weird grey colour. Everything about this person looks off. But why? The idea of a skinwalker has seen an increase in popularity. The thought of a creature posing as a human and then sneaking its way into the mass population is quite an unnerving idea. But to understand why this idea suddenly saw a rise, we must first look into its origins. In Navajo stories, skinwalkers are witches who oftentimes resemble a coyote or other animal indicating or symbolizing death. They walk on all fours and are known to cause general mischief. Navajo people are usually not allowed to talk about these creatures. Children especially have this idea instilled into them at a young age that talking about them is a bad omen and can also attract them. As the idea of the skinwalker evolved and began spreading to outer communities, we see that the skinwalker was used in stories primarily focused on hitchhikers on lonely roads or people on highways. During 1990, these legends were gathered via Northern Arizona University. Characteristics of original skinwalker stories include skinwalkers sneaking into Navajo Hogan's and dropping a fine white dust that would bring about sickness or death. Some of the stories collected by Northern Arizona University include a story involving a highway setting in which the driver witnesses a creature disguise itself as an elderly person, and another story that involves a skinwalker able to run as fast as a vehicle and taps on the side window of the narrator before running back into the forest. The skinwalker in modern interpretations is often seen as adapting to human culture. In many modern stories, the skinwalker will laugh as a way of instilling fear in others, which in contradiction to a few Navajo stories is known to kill them. These stories would slowly begin to spread and gain traction in small social circles, but what really cemented the ideas in the public was a case of Skinwalker Ranch. The Sherman family purchased a Utah ranch in 1994. Eventually they found their animals being mutilated and killed in very strange and disturbing ways. They claimed to have seen a wolf that took a calf with it and after shooting it seemed to have very little effect. They did also claim to see lights from the sky and other strange phenomena. The story ended up in a newspaper article where an eccentric billionaire, Robert Bigelow, after reading the article, purchased the ranch to do his own investigations. His investigation team, the so-called National Institute for Discovery Science, claimed that whenever a breakthrough discovery to expose supernatural happenings was about to be made, there was always an equipment failure. Very convenient. Anyways, the story about a billionaire purchasing a haunted ranch suddenly pushed the idea of a skinwalker into the public light, and soon this became a monster mentioned more often in discussions revolving around urban legends and myths. There have been a few creepypastas that have been known to surface via the internet. These creepypastas focusing on skinwalkers take a more unique approach. In these stories, skinwalkers begin to adapt to modern human culture, even communicating in the same dialect and language as the people they're tormenting. They'll eat the same food, join them in activities, and even engage in basic conversations, which makes them even more terrifying, especially if they can fit in. In a popular 4chan skinwalker tale, Anansi's Goatman story, a user explained an experience they had. The narrator at the time was 16 and was visiting the countryside in Alabama to visit the cousins. The narrator, the cousins, and some friends prepared to go on a camping trip. That's when a boy by the name of Tanner asked to join them. Eventually things start going wrong as after arriving at the trailers, Tanner, a cousin, and a friend decide to split off from the group. They go to Tanner his uncle's house to ask if he wants to join them. After returning, they notice a weird creature who makes strange noises hiding inside the hollow of a log. 
They return a little bit shaken, and the smell of ozone is often mentioned in the story, especially when the creature is nearby. Everyone else is a bit nervous, although the camping trip continues. For dinner, they begin cooking hot dogs for the group, one for each person. When someone complains that a person had eaten an extra hot dog, the narrator does a head count and notices that an extra person is inside the trailer with them. After running outside, the count the number of people has been reduced, realizing that there had been an extra person person inside with them. Half the group returns home, whilst the other half stays to help the narrator lock up the cabin. They notice the skinwalker, or the goat man as it is referred to in the story, disguised as one of the group members before it starts heaving. Eventually, Tanner returns knocking on the door, begging to be let in. That's when the skinwalker begins attempting to communicate with them by copying Tanner's exact words and dialect. It doesn't do a very good job at this as everyone is taken aback by its speech. The narrator describes the creature sounding like a cat imitating human language. What? Eventually, one of the cousins, Reese, goes outside with a shotgun. He fires his gun several times before a noise can be heard, described as a woman and a cat in a bag both fighting. The trees then start moving as the creature begins moving closer. Everyone decides to fall asleep after the noise subsides as Tanner keeps watch. Just as Tanner is about to sleep, he decides to count the number of people in the cabin, noticing an extra person. He doesn't fire his gun, believing that doing so will get everyone killed, and so he pretends to fall asleep. He notices the creature walking about and proceeding to do the same heaving motion. They all eat breakfast in the morning alongside the creature, which Tanner refuses to make eye contact with. After everyone leaves, it is then revealed that they had left the bathroom window open. In this story, the campers are cautious, and the idea that the creature has the ability to perform the same actions as everybody else gives the story an almost rising intensity in paranoia. But if you really want to turn up the notch, and if you really want a monster whose biological capabilities are beyond understanding, then look no further than the thing. The idea of rising paranoia from a creature that can shapeshift into anything it pleases is fully utilized in this movie. Adapted from John W. Campbell's novel, Who Goes There, it focuses once again on the rising paranoia of the group. The thing is highly intelligent. It can communicate very easily, shift quickly into other organisms, and is much more violent. Definitely trailing off from the idea of what a skinwalker could be, but still retains some of the old ideas of a shape-shifting creature sneaking its way into a group of people. What makes it stand out is its ability to so effortlessly communicate and retain the memories of the person it has assimilated. Unlike the other stories, no one really notices anything off about the creature, and they can only find out what it really is after making some incredibly intelligent decisions that reveal it. For a more interactive experience, the video game Skinwalker by Snow Owl provides a more intensely supernatural twist. Four teens, Joe, Darren, Celeste, and Michael decide to go camping in the woods. They set up a tent and all seems well. You play as Joe and after collecting water, you hear the sound of metal scraping. After returning, you all have dinner before falling asleep in the tent. That's when you hear something laughing. Joe goes to inspect it, but notices a shadow moving towards him. He wakes everyone up before the group finds a dead mutilated rabbit. The group remains uneasy, but fortunately they do have a cabin to go to. On your way to the cabin, the whole forest begins being shrouded in a mist, and you notice your friend Celeste is on the ground. That's when you do a head count. One, two, three, four, and five. The person who's holding your hand is not Celeste. Running back, the creature begins pounding on the door, and after looking around for a bit, loud noises can be heard before everyone begins to feel weak and nauseous. You black out and notice a trail going outside. You see the skinwalker on the roof of the cabin rotate its neck before looking at you. Seeing that the car has been turned on, you go inside to find your friends. It turns out the skinwalker had actually been inside of you and was imitating your form of speech. You apparently said something whilst you were possessed, although 
no one elaborates on what. It jumps out in front of you before Celeste shoots it through the windshield. As you walk out, you notice that your face is on the tip of its tongue. And as another shot is fired, you see that there are other tiny faces scattered around a glowing eye, ready for the skinwalker to use when it needs to. What happens when you introduce skinwalkers on a mass scale? What happens when the results cause hysteria but also a form of normality? Within the series, the central monster is referred to as a woodcrawler. In the first episode, we hear about how they like to invade the homes of large families. From the cameraman's perspective, we see the woodcrawlers going about daily life the same way we would. It's almost like they're rehearsing and trying their best to act like humans. In a camping video, we see instances in which woodcrawlers knock on the doors of some of the cabins, resulting in the deaths and capture of many of the camp leaders after they open the door. For whatever reason, the camp counselors are referred to as vessels, perhaps being captured and controlled by the woodcrawlers. We also see that the campers begin spreading rumors of skinwalkers, so we understand that woodcrawlers may adapt to similar behaviors represented in those legends. Later on, we see a depiction of woodcrawlers in the form of a video game. Every time this prompt appears on screen, there's an expectation that the player will shoot all the enemies Enemies. However, towards the end, the title informs the player that all the enemies are dead, and yet one enemy is moving slowly towards them. Shooting it doesn't do anything either, which may indicate that the game doesn't consider them to be an enemy, or even a conceivable human. In this informative guide, we see a man screaming for help. Here, the woodcrawler is smart enough to try and take advantage of a person's empathy as a way of luring them to their death. They can also possess bears. Now, unlike normal skinwalkers, we begin seeing that woodcrawlers function similarly to a kind of infection or disease. It can, in fact, slowly begin to take over a person from the inside as its red veins begin controlling the body. They even have their own nests and an ecosystem. In Home Invasion, we actually see what the manifestation process of a woodcrawler looks like, and in the final episode, we see a person by the name of Johnson, who has been mostly taken over by a woodcrawler. Most terrifying part is that it begins copying the sounds of the interviewer, and we see that the woodcrawler actually needs to go through the process of learning before it can fully form sentences and behavioral patterns. This series is very complex in regards to its storytelling. The skinwalkers here are referred to as alternates, who actively learn prey of those who are close to them. They also excel in psychological ability, able to lure people via communicating with them through manipulation, or by appealing to religion. Mark Heathcliff and Caesar Torres are both friends. An alternate who is posing as Caesar convinces Mark to help him set up a camera at his home. This alternate is then able to kill him after following him and waiting outside his room. The alternate here is so smart that it's actually able to engage in an entire phone call and mimics exactly what Caesar would say. In an informative video, we also see different variations that alternates can take, and they are generally identifiable by some odd feature. Again, this is a common depiction in a lot of stories in which characters are able to point out an oddity that a skinwalker has, whether it's the manner, communication, physical appearance, or biological difference of the creature that makes them stand out. Our final depiction ends here on Reddit forums. Yes, I know. Recently, there has been a significant rise in the concepts and depictions of skinwalkers. Generally, there will be recordings or memes of people or animals acting strangely. The first video shown was actually one that I found on this forum, and many comments have agreed with me that the video is in fact very terrifying. The depictions of skinwalkers here are a very bizarre representation. On one hand, you have genuinely terrifying scenarios depicting various interpretations through the use of video and short clips. But on the other hand, storylines can sometimes involve a person accidentally attacking another person, believing that they are a skinwalker. These later depictions are a lot more comedic and almost poke fun at the idea of paranoia.
In my favourite story on the subreddit, we see an elderly man. The man has some sort of issue where he has difficulties remembering things. It's his birthday and as the cake sits in front of him, he is highly paranoid. He claims to have never seen the people surrounding him in his life before, and as the video continues, we see terrifying smiles begin to manifest on the family members surrounding him. The old man has left the oven on, causing gas to fill up the room as he's preparing to set fire to everything. The most terrifying part is that we don't ever find out if the old man was in the right or whether he was experiencing delusions. Well, that's about it. I'll leave you with whatever this is. Seriously, what is up with this subreddit? Check out the Patreon for early access content or subscribe for more video essays. Okay, bye bye.